Well, we are well into another week of our COVID captivity, our uh, social distancing, and uh, our deprivation of all things we enjoy. Well, that's I'm being a little bit harsh, aren't I? It's not that bad. But we are, again, continuing in this journey that is very new to all of us and can be very discouraging to all of us. And definitely there are days, I'm sure you have, like I have had the last couple of days, where I wake up a little tired, not as excited as usual to get out of bed, um, just struggling with the present reality we're in. And I want you to know that's, that's a very normal part of going through this. But I also want to remind you that, that there are ways for us to work through these struggles. You're not going through them alone. And one of, the, one of the important steps of my day, even when I don't always feel like it, is to pause and spend time with God. What I do is I usually find a corner and oftentimes my uh, buddy and dog Simba finds that corner with me and he crawls up in the chair next to me. I open God's word and I read God's word. I reflect on God's word and then I try to spend some time in prayer. And I know for many of you that prayer is not an easy thing to do. But here's what I do and, and I'll talk about it more at a later date. But I actually pray through the Lord's Prayer and I just break it down into segments and I pray and I reflect on each, each part of the Lord's Prayer. So for instance, this morning as I was looking at our Father, the first line of the Lord's Prayer, I use that as a time to not only praise Him for who He is and what He's done for us, but to remind me of who He is and remind myself and that, that He is trustworthy and that I can rest in Him and his steadfast love endures forever. One of the passages of scripture that I have under this section is from Psalm 30, verses 4 and 5. It goes like this. Sing praises to the Lord, O his saints, and give thanks to his holy name. For his anger is but for a moment, and his favor for a lifetime. Weeping may tarry for the night, but joy comes with the morning. I like that. I don't always sing praises out loud. But I do pause for a moment and, and reflect on, on who God is. Praise Him for who He is. Praise Him for what He's done. Praise Him for his, the goodness and grace that He's lavished on me. And, and that's what the psalmist saying. Sing praises, all ye, O ye saints. There's something about singing praises, reminding yourself of the goodness of God that, that relieves you, lifts you up out of the doldrums. But he also says, and give thanks to His holy name thanking the Lord, being very specific, thanking the Lord for a lot that he's given you. And you will, I promise you, you'll always find something. There's always something there to be thankful about, even when it seems like everything has gone wrong in your life. And if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, he explains here in the following verse. Notice what it says here. For his anger is but for a moment, and his favor is for a lifetime. See, if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, you no longer face the anger of God. You no longer have to face the wrath of God. That anger and that wrath was poured out on Jesus Christ when he died on the cross. And then when we come to him by faith, we, have, we receive not only the forgiveness through Christ Jesus, but a new name. We've been justified. We've been declared as righteous. And so when the Father sees us, he sees the righteousness of Jesus. And the anger will not be poured out on us because he sees the finished work of Jesus Christ. Jesus really did pay it all. He bore the wrath of God. So that anger is not something that we have to favor, we have to, we have to, to dread or look forward to. The truth is that in the middle of all the hardships and other, whatever you're facing, even if you feel like God is angry at you now, if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, he's not. Because his favor lasts a lifetime. You see, receiving the favor, the grace of God in our life is something that is given to us and we will have for all eternity. That's good news. And if you have nothing else that you think you can praise God for, nothing else that you feel like you can be thankful for, you have that. But notice one more thing that he says, weeping may tarry for the night. See, we are in a dark night. 
This is a season that's a dark night for individuals, a, day, a dark night for many nations of the world. It's a dark night where there is weeping because we have lost loved ones. Some of you have lost those who are very close to you. We are facing physical death. There's a need for weeping, but we're also struggling because there's financial heartaches. There's, many have lost their jobs, been furloughed by their jobs, can't pay their rent, are struggling immensely financially. And the worries and the burdens of what the future may hold for us can overwhelm us. It's like having a hot tossing and turning in your bed in the middle of the night and you just long for the night to be over and morning to come and see some sunshine. See, we are in that long, dark night and there is weeping. And I want to say to you, it's okay to weep. It's okay to mourn because there is sadness and there is struggle. But, he goes on, joy comes with the morning. You see, this isn't all there is. This isn't all there is. And I'm confident that even in your life now, you will find joy from the Lord, regardless of how you may struggle, because He promises to grant it to us. And believers throughout all ages have been able, by the grace of God, to find and experience joy, even in the hardest difficulties here on earth. But the best part is, that our greatest joy comes through our relationship with Jesus Christ, a deeper awareness of who He is, and the joy and the delight of knowing that regardless of how hard He gets here on earth, the best is yet to come. You see, weeping may last for a night time, but joy comes in the morning. And I promise you, morning is coming. I'm Bob Warner, and I'd like you to think about that.